You've all heard of the Iditarod, mm -hmm. right? Obviously, but who are the people under all that fleece and Gore-Tex? <laughs> Being a dog musher in Alaska, it's not just a hobby. It is a passion. It is year-round, and it's this morning's American Snapshot. The dogs. For a musher, every day revolves around the team. I'm the guy that knows 500 dogs by name and about 10 people. <laughs> <laughs> it's not glamorous getting up early to saw frozen salmon steaks. I provide everything. Order, food, yeah. shelter, stimuli, you know, training. Martin Boozer holds the record for the most consecutive Iditarod runs, 23. He's won it four times. Being out with your best friends, with your, with your canine athletes, if that's not what makes you drive, if you only like the race, the, the exposure and the the little bit of fame, you're doing it for the wrong motivation. He is famous, of course, makes his living off big sponsors the way NASCAR drivers would, but the race, that's not really his life. His life is nurturing and training 80 dogs to find the 16 best. This Iditarod is not a sporting event that takes me eight days, 22 hours, 46 minutes and two seconds, but who's counting? It really takes me 365. It takes me all year long to run that race. What do you tell young people who want to do this? I start, usually I start with young people. I, you live every now and again like a vacation? Oh yeah, that'd be great. Well, you're not no in vacation. Idea. No vacation for the foreseeable future. <laughs> Rookie Karen Hendrickson is learning just how all it is. This is Skeeter. His sister is Maggot. Like Mosquito Skeeter. Yes, his Got brother it. is Fly. He has another sister named Cricket. The rule of thumb is one dog will cost about $1,000 per year in upkeep. Karen estimates spending $30,000 to run her first Iditarod. If she finishes, she'll get $1,000. Not even enough to pay for the booties her dogs wear in training. They say it's the worst, most expensive addiction you can have. Um, there's lots of parts to it. Primarily, it's the dogs. There's a bond with the dogs and the places that you go and the things you see. And just the whole, um, when you really challenge yourself, like mountain climbing or something like that, just to see if you can do it. Hi, sweetie. Six years ago, this California native ditched everything. I quit a pretty good career. I sold a house. I sold almost everything I owned. I moved up here and worked for room and board to learn how to run dogs. Did your friends tell you you were crazy? Uh-huh. Yeah, <laughs> they still do. Well, I love the challenge, the fact that we're almost out of control. Martin took me along on one of the five-mile training runs that morning. Each dog is pulling about 10 pounds. Yeah, a boy, good dog, Sequoia. As fall turns to winter, he'll gradually increase the distance, like training for a marathon. This time of year, their trail gives them the perfect sunrise view. You never get tired of it? Oh, just like anybody, there's a not so good day in the office every now and again. But for the most part, it's a lot of work, a lot of fun. And I asked Martin what his best tip for a rookie like Karen is, and he said if you get to one of those nights on the Iditarod where you feel like you just can't take it anymore, you're tired, you're cold, you got lost, just go to sleep and wake up the next morning fresh, and maybe you'll keep on going. While you're moving on the sled? No, you can, no, 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 you can stop, and you can take a break, okay. and you can sleep. <laughs> Even better. Take, take, a break, you take, take a break, take a break, and then you'll feel better about it in the morning. Ooh, Good advice. <laughs> Mush.